Let's solve a problem from the International Physics Olympiad in India. We have a particle that is initially starting at the origin right here. This frictionless plane is split into two regions. In region one across here, there is no potential V is equal to zero. And it enters a region at which the potential is equal to V naught. The first part of the question is to express V2 in terms of M, V1 and the potential. Okay, so this question does not start too difficult and we can just use conservation of energy. In the first region, the particle has kinetic energy only. So in region one, we can write that the total energy is equal to a half MV1 squared. In the second region, the particle has kinetic energy and potential energy. The kinetic energy will be given by half mv2 squared plus the potential which is v0. And we can directly rearrange this for v2. And there it is, 0.2 points complete. Part two, express V2 in terms of V1, theta one, and theta two. There's a much easier way to tackle this question and that is to think about the forces. There will only be a change of potential if we're moving along the X axis when the particle transfers from region one to region two. If we go in the Y direction, there will not be a change of potential. And remember that force is given by the gradient of the potential of the negative gradient. So uh, in a way, there will be a force given by this derivative across here. But what is important is that this force will be in the x direction only. So the y component of the velocity will remain completely unchanged. Therefore, we can write that v1y will be equal to v2y, i.e. v1 sine theta1 will be given, will be equal to v2 sine theta2. Two. And we have scored another 0.3 points. Now the next part is where this problem gets really interesting. We define this quantity which is known as the action, which is equal to m, the integral vs ds. Now this is a line integral along a path. For a particle with a constant energy, we can actually show that, that out of all the different paths that it can take, the real path that it takes is the one where this quantity a is an extremum. And historically Historically, this is known as the principle of least action. Let's define some coordinates and apply this into action here. We're going to say that the point at which this particle crosses from region one into region two will have coordinates alpha on the y-axis and x1 on the x-axis. And the particle will finish off in position P, which has coordinates y0 and x0. What this question is asking us is to find a as a function of alpha when use the principle of least action, i.e. find an extremum to find the ratio of v1 over v2. Okay, let's build our integral. Well, a will be equal to m and then the line integral of the speed. However, notice that our integral will now simply be equal to more multiplication because the speed will be constant in the first region and the speed will be constant in the second region. And the only uh, place where we'll have a change of speed is this boundary across here. So I'm going to split this expression into two parts, one for region one and one for region two. In region one, this will be equal to m, then v1, the path that this particle will take up to position alpha. Well, we can just find that using Pythagoras. So this here will be given by the square root of x1 squared plus alpha squared. For region two, we're going to add m multiplied by v2 and then the square root of, well, we just need to take away x0 minus x1. This will be the horizontal distance traveled in it. So it'll be x0 take away x1, that will be squared plus the distance in the y direction that's been traveled, which will be given by y0 take away alpha squared. 
Okay, and now our question says that we need to use the principle of least action, i.e. we want to minimize this and find a as a function of alpha. So what I'm going to do is differentiate with respect to alpha. So I'm going to say that dA by d alpha, can't write alpha today, so dA by d alpha will be given by, now m and v1 are actually constant, so I'm going to get m v1. The derivative of the square root of this expression will just be given by x1 squared plus alpha squared raised to the power of minus a half which we can write like this. And then using the chain rule, we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which will just be given by two times alpha plus mv squared are also constants. And then we need to differentiate this using the same principle. So we're going to be dividing by x naught take away x1 squared plus y naught take away alpha squared. And this whole expression is raised to the power of a half. And now using the chain rule, I need to differentiate the functions on the inside. So this one here will disappear. And what we're going to get is two times y naught take away alpha. And then applying the chain rule again, this factor of minus alpha needs to be differentiated, which is going to give us a minus sign here. Now, because we're using the principle of least action and we want to find a minimum of this function, what I'm going to do is set this derivative dA by d alpha to be equal to zero. And this will allow me to do one of my favorite things and that is to cancel terms out of an equation. So this factor of m can go, this factor of two can also go. And what we're left with is that v1 alpha divided by x1 squared plus alpha squared raised to the power of a half will be given will be equal to v2 y naught minus alpha divide that by x naught minus x1 squared plus y naught take away alpha squared. This whole thing is raised to the power of a half. And now let's rearrange for v1 over v2, which will be given by y naught take away alpha multiplied by this expression, x1 squared plus alpha squared raised to the power of a half, divide that by x naught minus x1 squared plus y naught take away alpha squared raised to the power of a half, and then this factor of alpha will be brought here. But hang on a minute, just thinking about trigonometry, sine of theta 1 will just be given by the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Now if this here is theta 1, then our opposite will be just this length alpha, and our hypotenuse is just this length across here, which is x1 squared plus alpha squared, raised to the power of a half. And using the same principle, we can see that sine theta 2 will be the opposite, which is y naught take away alpha, divided by the arc length given by this expression here. Well, comparing this and what we've derived here, we can see that v1 over v2 will be given by y naught minus alpha divided by this expression. Well, that's just sine theta 2, and then x1 squared plus alpha squared square root divided by alpha, well that's just the inverse of sine theta 1, so we can divide by sine theta 1, meaning that v1 sine theta 1 will be given by v2 sine theta 2, which is the same expression that we derived in the previous part of the question. And after all these beautiful maths, we come to this very simple conclusion. This type of maths can actually be directly used to derive Snell's law in optics. I'm definitely going to do that in a future video. Do let me know if you'd like to see that. Until then though, you should definitely have a look at yet another Olympiad question. Remember, every single one of them teaches you something unique about physics and this one is right over here.